to this third Sunday after the Epiphany. Our service this morning will be daily morning prayer right two, which we can found in the prayer book on page 78. If you do not have a book of common prayer, but would like to follow along, you can find the prayer book at bcponline.org, click on the daily office, and then click on daily morning prayer right two. Our readings can be found at lectionarypage.net. Again, our service this morning is daily morning prayer right two, beginning on page 78 of the prayer book. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Saying together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. We give you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 
Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us say together the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 62, verses 6 through 14. Psalm 62, verses 6 through 14. Let us say the psalm in unison. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, and how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle this morning is Canticle I. The Song of Jonah. Let us say the canticle in unison. I call to you, O God, out of my distress, and you answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol, I cried, and you heard my voice. You cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight. How shall I ever look again upon your holy temple? The waters closed in over me. The deep was round about me. Weeds were wrapped around my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land beneath the earth. Yet you brought up my life from the depths, O God. As my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, O God, and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. With the voice of thanksgiving, I will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will pay, for deliverance belongs to the Lord. 
from reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, beginning at the 14th verse. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, where they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in the boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. An important part of an Episcopal clergy person's vocation is participating in continuing education each year. I enrolled this fall in a seminar entitled, When the Stars Begin to Fall, Preaching the Old Testament at This Time. Like most of our life during these peculiar times, this class was held via Zoom. This was a great six-week seminar where it touched on so many different aspects of life today through the lens of the Old Testament, with an emphasis on the latter days. As we all know, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount is considered the greatest sermon of the New Testament and perhaps of the entire Bible. But what is the greatest sermon in the Old Testament? Which sermon in the 39 books of the Old Testament would be considered the greatest? There are so many to choose from. At our seminar, we were asked this question. We all looked at our screens calling out different answers as we awaited to hear what our professor was thinking. He finally said, well, the greatest sermon in the Old Testament comes down to a mere five words in the Hebrew language, which translated for us is, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. A sermon delivered by the prophet Jonah. We all looked at our screens like, really? Our professor noticed our bewildered expressions and said, think of it this way. Of all the Old Testament prophets who spoke with eloquence and rich language, when it comes down to it, most of the people complained about them, and they were ignored, not listened to, and persecuted. However, Jonah comes into a foreign land, Nineveh, predicts its destruction in one sentence, and the people believed. A fast was declared, young and old covered themselves in sackcloth, all repented of their sins, and in the end, God spared the city. The greatest Old Testament sermon goes to the recalcitrant prophet Jonah. We may sometimes look at the different biblical passages we hear on Sundays, as I did this week, and wonder why our lectionary paired them together. I decided after reading our lessons to concentrate mainly on the gospel, not really understanding why we were hearing this passage from Jonah. How does it really connect to discipleship, which is the focus of the gospel passage? As is usually the case, when I immediately push one reading to the side, I kept being drawn back to this passage. And juxtaposing this passage with the gospel is really quite wonderful. I said to someone this week, it is very hard to preach on our Old Testament reading because it lacks context. I laughed when I started reading some commentaries this week that noted this same challenge and therefore brought the passage into its context. One aspect of this reading we may immediately notice is the opening. 
the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. This means there must have been a first time. Jonah is an interesting prophetic book. It is a book mainly about the prophet, although he is never referred to as a prophet, and about Israel. He is recalcitrant and sulks when his hearers repent. Unlike the more somber tone of the prophetic books, this book uses humor to make its points. It contains many ludicrous situations, sleeping through a violent storm while at sea, a man being swallowed by a fish, animals fasting and wearing sackcloth. Yet its main themes, repentance, forgiveness, and deliverance, all remind us, as it did the people of Israel, of God's extravagant love for us and God's grace in our lives. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amatai, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come before me. Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. And we are told he tried to flee from the presence of the Lord. You cannot really blame him. He hears God calling him into a foreign land to preach of its destruction for the people's sins. This would surely make him very unpopular. Nineveh is not just any foreign land either. It is the capital of the kingdom that violently conquered and occupied the northern kingdom of Israel. So Jonah flees from the Lord. He heads to Joppa, outside Israelite territory, and hops a ship towards Tarshish. While en route to Tarshish, the Lord sends a terrible windstorm upon the waters. The storm becomes so violent that the crew reluctantly throws Jonah overboard, hoping to appease God. The winds cease, and then we have a wonderful account of forgiveness and conversion. The crew feels horrible for what they have done, fearing they spilled innocent blood by throwing Jonah overboard. They are not Israelites, yet make sacrifices and vows to God, repenting and showing their belief in God. So they are not punished, and they watch as Jonah is not drowned but swallowed by a fish, probably what he is remembered most for, and resides in this fish for three days and three nights. While in the belly of the fish, he sings a song to the Lord, which we recited in our canticle. He says, you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and billows pressed me, pressed over me. This would bring up all sorts of imagery for the people. The chaos and danger of the sea as it was seen in the ancient Near East. The flood of Noah. But also the parting of the sea in which God delivered the Israelites. God hears Jonah's song deep within the fish and orders the fish to spew Jonah out on a dry land. And this is where our reading for today begins. So Jonah heads to Nineveh, gives this fire and brimstone sermon, and perhaps surprisingly, people repent. They declare fast, cover themselves in sackcloth, and God changes his mind and does not bring destruction upon the city. Jonah is actually not happy with God for sparing the city. He basically says, you sent me here to tell the people of the impending destruction, and I knew you would change your mind. That is a passage and a sermon for another day. You have Peter and Andrew, James and John. They hear Jesus call them, follow me. 
follow me and I will make you fishers of people. And they immediately leave what they are doing and follow him. Then you have Jonah, whom the Lord calls. And Jonah heads the other way. An interesting juxtaposition in their contrast and an interesting juxtaposition in their similarities, most wonderfully in their call. They differ in how they respond, yet they are all called to follow the Lord. And through Jonah's life and the disciples' life, we see the deep meaning in this call. That we cannot escape the call, which is quite wonderful. And what it means to follow me. It means to serve. To serve the Lord and to serve the people by living and bringing the word of God into being. The disciples did this while with Jesus and took up the mantle of his ministry after he ascended. And the word began to spread across the world. Jonah brought the word of God to the people of Nineveh, the word of repentance, mercy, and forgiveness. Through Jonah's sermon, ominous as it was, the mercy and forgiveness of God was realized throughout Nineveh. And this message would have reminded the hearers of this book in the fifth century BC, when it is believed this book was compiled of God's extravagant mercy, forgiveness, and love. Love for the Israelites and through the sailors and people of Nineveh. Love for all. A message proclaimed in the life of Jesus shown immediately on Epiphany. The overall tone of the book of Jonah, mercy and deliverance, Forgiveness and love seen in Jonah's life and ministry, seen in Nineveh, is always present. My friends, this is good news worth telling. This is good news which is so needed today. And this is good news that we are blessed to tell. Two thousand years ago, Jesus did more than only call the disciples to follow him, but continue the call of God to God's people and call the disciples into a ministry that they then would continue. A ministry which here in the year of 2021 has been handed over to us. The call is the same as always. Follow me, follow Jesus. The ministry is the same as always, to serve God and God's people by spreading the good news of God. The way we live out this ministry, by listening, not just hearing, but by listening to Jesus, who guides us into the myriad ways of professing his gospel. It may not turn out the way we want or think it should at times. And like Jonah, we may not want any part of it at times. Yet there is no escaping God's call. And who knows what blessings God will send our way to let us know he is still calling. Calling us. Follow me. To God be glory, majesty, honor, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our song of praise this morning is hymn 480, found in the hymn.
our service continues on page 96. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us say together, Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The collect of the day. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Sundays. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A collect for the nation. Save us, O sovereign God, from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. And do with the spirit of wisdom those to whom we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to your law, we may show forth your praise. In the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in you to fail. All truly ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A collect for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning or according to Form 3, found on page 387 of the prayer book or in your bulletins. Prayers of the people.
Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our words may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. We pray for the repose of the soul of Adam, a brother of friends of Father John's. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for those for whom our prayers have been asked of St. James, for Carol, Moss, Andrea, August, Donna, Mort, Sandy, Paul, Betty, Jeff, Chris, Marge, Denise, Betty, Bill, Kathy, Doug, Julie, Kimberly, Jimmy, Ed, Shirley, Rip, Jacob, Larry, Anna, Marie, Hugh, Barbara, Wayne, Victoria, Michael, Christopher, Steve, Liesel, Bill, and Charlotte. You know their needs, dear Lord. And now uh, Paul Young to finish the prayers. What did you leave on? We pray for those for whom prayers have been asked of all saints, for Monica and family very ill with COVID, for Grove, Lynn, and Laurie, and all our professors and teachers, for Kristen and Barbara, Herb, Karen, Kevin, and Paula, Harry, Della, Anna, Leanne, Anne, Jubilee, Judy, for Niana's friends, Seeking Asylum in the U.S. for our health workers, Melissa, Ann, Margie, during doing COVID nursing in Lowell, Lydia's daughter, Sarah, Beth, and Becky, and for our elders, Christine, Sally, John D., and Country Rehan, for those solemnly, anxiously waiting to receive the vaccine for Laura's, Laurie's Aunt Laura, Nicholas' grandfather, and Bessie Knight. We pray for those all struggling with COVID-19 and for those mourning the deaths of family and friends. We pray for places, places where COVID-19 virus is surging and overwhelming. We thank you for the administration of vaccine authority in Massachusetts. We pray for patients as we wait to be vaccinated. We pray for all of us, us all that we will continue practice mask wearing, social distancing, and limiting gatherings inside to stop the surge of the virus and reduce the death rate. We thank you for a safe transition of power and we pray for our new president, Joseph Biden, and for Vice President Kamala Harris. We pray, O oh God, oh Lord, guide us all in our government in the ways of justice and mercy and truth and restore health and peace to our divided country in a new affirmation of each American's worth and the need for restorative justice based on repentance and reconciliation. We give thanks for our faith community that we are able to come together in worship. We give thanks for our for all faith communities and for our diocese. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people. 
and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to unmute yourselves and greet everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Peace. 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 Peace be with you. Pray. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, Deb, is um, uh, is Liza selling her Bernie memes? Uh, it, it, write me and we'll see. Uh, she okay. may make another one. She's oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. to see everyone this morning. I always it say is. to myself when I go outside and it's in the teens that it's always colder. It seems always colder when it's in the teens than when it's in the 20s or 30s. Right. So it is. Doing their best to stay warm. Yeah. So peace, everyone. Yep. Thank Our you. Our service will continue with a general thanksgiving on page 101 or in your bulletins. Okay. Let us say the general thanksgiving together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you, in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. The Prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 537 in the hymnal. Oh